hi everyone so welcome back to my channel um, for my existing subscribers and supporters and if you are new to my channel my name is Daphne and I hope that you all are having a great day so um, today I wanted to come and I wanted to share with you all um, my journey of dealing with chronic pain um, and share with you all some things that I use to help me get through um, some days are easier than others some days you know I'm I'm fighting through you know the pain I may not show it but I'm fighting through the pain the fatigue and all the other symptoms that I may experience so um, I've mentioned it here on my channel before that I have fibromyalgia and I was actually diagnosed in 2018 but you know thinking back um, because I actually went to my doctor um, I went to the doctor um, maybe once yeah prior to that um, I had an appointment prior to my actual diagnosis uh, which I was going in because I was in a lot of pain and this was like in 2016 to 2017 or so I think it was more so around 2016 so I went in um, and the doctor I was seeing at the time was a primary care doctor. Um, I told her what I was experiencing and whatnot. And she pretty much told me to take some ibuprofen and sent me out of the door. And that was already my cue then that, you know, maybe I need to see another doctor, get another doctor. And, um, it actually did work out that I did end up getting a um, different doctor because she ended up leaving that facility I don't know why and you know but um, I got another doctor and fast forward to you know me just kind of thinking okay maybe this is just pain from me working you know the way I work because I was working full-time and I was working even outside of you know my normal work schedule like I was always doing something um, outside of my normal work schedule never really taking my off days to like really rest or anything like that um, and I was just always on the go so Fast forward to 2018 when I actually did go back to the doctor because I was just like something is wrong you know um, I was you know carrying my youngest daughter um, I had her in 2017 but during the course of the pregnancy I had some pain but I didn't think it was you know again I didn't think it was pain you know that was related to the actual diagnosis that I was given um, I just knew something wasn't right you know in my body so like I said fast forward to 2018 um, I ended up I guess going through a flare and this was the worst flare I believe I had had since you know experiencing um, pain usually if I had to rate it in the beginning I would rate my pain level in the beginning when I first started having issues I would rate it between like a six or a seven maybe and this one particular time 
yeah when my pain you know I guess it just came full force and you know it was just going crazy at that time um one I was under a lot of stress um just dealing with everyday life trying to take care of my kids still trying to work um taking my youngest daughter uh, back and forth to the doctor and just dealing with all of her diagnosis and just keeping up with a lot of stuff I think just a lot of stress at that time is what actually triggered my body to have this sensation of pain you know even though there was nothing done you know to me to actually cause it you know it was just pain that just hits you out of nowhere and so um this time around like the pain was like it was 10 and above like it was through the roof um i remember early on when it first started I would come home from work and I would just tell my husband like I'm just in so much pain. Um, I even had conversations with um, some of my co-workers and how we got on the conversation of being in pain I don't know but I had conversations with them and you know I had started telling them about you know how I was experiencing pain and whatnot and um, so this one particular night I came home and I thought I was going to relax and chill you know and this pain just hit me in my legs just out of nowhere and it felt like someone had literally stabbed me with a huge like pitchfork or something like I just had sharp shooting pain and then it's like it started migrating to other areas of my body and like I said it was through the roof um, and I can't even remember if I even took something to kind of help with the pain that particular night or not um, but I do remember I had started like getting into like the tub and stuff like that just whenever my body was in pain I would just go and sit in the tub, you know, even if I've already taken my shower or whatnot for the day. If I felt like my body was flaring back up, the pain was flaring back up, I would go right back, get in the tub. Because I found at that time that the warm water or hot water, that did take the edge off in that moment. So... I would go and just, you know, like I say, even if I've taken my shower or bath for the day, I would just go and get back in and I would sit in there or, you know, stay in the tub until I felt like, you know, I was okay enough to come out. Um, but I immediately went ahead and I made a doctor's appointment. And by this time, you know, I've already got my new doctor. So... Um, I ended up making a doctor's appointment, told them what I was wanting to come in for. So on my appointment day, um, and by this time it had already been three weeks. I had to wait. I couldn't get in any sooner. And for three weeks, I was in pain. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, like four and a half. But after I made my appointment, I had to wait for about three weeks or so to actually get seen by the doctor. And every day it was excruciating pain. Um, I may have taken, you know, medicine to see if it'll help, but there was no relief at all. Um, so the day of my appointment, I went into my doctor again. I told you know my new doctor what I was experiencing and she kept asking me questions and there was sometimes I felt like she was rewording you know the same question pretty much um, 
And I would just always, I would give her the same answer. Like, I didn't know what else to tell her. I mean, it didn't matter how much she tried to reword it or whatever, you know. Um, she was still going to get the same answer. Because, I mean, I'm trying to explain to you how my pain level has been. And actually before my appointment, I had already actually started Googling. I started Googling and I know sometimes they say, you know, don't Google, you know, certain diagnoses and whatever the case may be. But sometimes you have to do that so that you can kind of say, okay, well, if it's a possibility I'm dealing with this or that, then, you know, maybe, you know, you might be able to find something that can help you during the, during that time to get some relief before you have an actual diagnosis or you might see how other people are coping with it or you know you just get in your information like learning um about whatever the disease or you know whatever the issue may be you're getting your information just so you can kind of understand what might be going on so that was me i wanted to know like okay what could be causing me to have all over, you know, widespread pain and there's no specific cause for it, you know. Um, so, she told me right off that, um, she didn't even, I know people say, you know, sometimes they do like the trigger point you know, test or whatever. She hadn't even touched me or anything. She was just still at the computer and she was typing up some stuff. And she was like, I really do believe you have fibromyalgia. And that was already what I already had in my mind. I'm like, this has to be fibromyalgia because the way I was feeling, I would get either sharp shooting, pain, um, and I would be in pain from head to toe like my finger like the tip ends of my fingers would hurt and even like the my toes like I would be hurting from head to toe and I would have like these crawling sensations on my body sometimes or I would have um like I said, the all over pain and sometimes it will be like pain that just kind of migrates, you know, from one spot to the other. Um, I even started having issues where there's an actual spot on my back. It's actually on the left side over the top of my scapula. Um, that has always, I think, kind of been a sensitive area for me. Um and it always feels kind of numb and I've also experienced that in other spots other areas of my body as well like on my arms or then my legs like I just have some of the sensations where it almost feel like it's numb or um, sometimes I'll have you know sensations where even just the fans blowing air in you know a room or something if it's on high um it hurts my skin like that's how sensitive my skin was and it just it felt like razor blades were cutting my skin that's how bad it hurts and there were other issues where i've i have experienced nausea or just being out in the sun or sun coming into the household or you know shining in I did not like it like I just felt very weird I felt off I was always fatigued and still to this day I deal with fatigue um and it was just you know some other things as well that I was you know dealing with and so she eventually um she went ahead and she ordered some labs to, you know, get me tested for any other things. Um, and I think during that time, some of my labs came back okay. Um, I know that I think there was a test that 
tested me for like inflammation. I think that number was like one or two um, points off or something like that. But I don't think it was, you know, enough to alarm, you know, her to say, okay, we have to look into this further. Um, and of course my, um, cholesterol and my, the test they do for, you know, test you for diabetes, that was off as well, which I already knew because I had previous tests before. So I have been trying to work on those issues and sometimes I do good and sometimes I do bad with it. So I'm still working on it to this day to get those things under control. Um, but I'm not on any medication for, you know, cholesterol or, you know, diabetes or anything like that. Um, so I think she ended up prescribing me Zyclofenic and she also prescribed me some Balta. So those were the first two meds I was on and I took them for a while. I want to say about three months or so and then I had to go back for a follow up. I did not feel a difference at all at all so we increased I ended up coming off of the symbol not the symbolta but the diclofenic I came off of that and we ended up increasing the symbolta to kind of see how it would do with that well I think we got up to like a 20 she started me on 10 milligrams I got up to a 20 milligram and I'm going to tell you with that one, like I just did not feel right at all. Um, I don't know. I just had like this shakiness or something about me. Um, and I'm just like, I don't know if I can stay on this, you know, with the type of work that I do. Um, I kind of need my hands <laughs> and... I just noticed certain things were going on with me and plus um, I think during that time I just started just having some anxiety and some depression issues too and that may very well could have been the main cause of the shakiness but we um we ended up taking me off of some balsa because one, I just felt like it was not helping with the pain and I didn't feel any difference, you know, in any other areas. I know some people use some balsa for, you know, anxiety or whatnot. Um, but I did not feel any difference with that. So... Um, I also experienced hot flashes when we went to the 20 milligram I started having just these weird hot flashes out of nowhere uh, with that and I was just like I don't know if I can stay on this medicine so um, yeah my next follow up I went back we ended up she ended up getting me set up with a pain management um, clinic and I want to say yeah the pain management doctor that I had during that time she ended up prescribing me gabapentin and I've been on gabapentin since then we have which started me at I think 100 milligrams and I was taking it three times a day yeah I think that's what we were doing and then 
you know, the pandemic hit and whatever. And um, my actual pain management doctor that I was seeing, she ended up leaving the facility. And so I had to end up getting another pain management doctor. But doing all of that, even with switching to gabapentin, like, I still, you know, experience those high pain levels um, some days. And there are days where, you know, I, I can't. I literally cannot get out of bed. I don't want to move. It hurts to walk. Because the bottom of my feet, they just, it hurts too bad, you know. Um, and like I said, there are days where I just have to tough it out, you know. And it's just, it's been a struggle. It's been hard. But, um, and, you know, I always had like this. Um, thought like is this just fibromyalgia alone could it be something else which I'm going to eventually get to but um, I found myself going back and forth to the doctor like every four to six months and I found myself calling out of work a lot more than I ever did and I have never been that type of person to call out of work you know so I'm just like you know something is wrong when I have to call out of work when I don't want to get up or when I'm having trouble getting up and doing just daily activities around the house or just you know going out running errands when I'm having issues with that you know something has to be wrong so, um, I still proceeded to take the gabapentin and I was still on the 100 milligram three times a day. Um, and I would voice that every time I would have an appointment. Okay, this is what I'm still experiencing or this is, you know, my new issue that I'm having, you know, problems with or whatever the case may be. And... To be honest, you know, I want to say this before I move any further. To anybody, it doesn't matter what your diagnosis is. Please advocate for yourself. Because honestly, <clears throat> and I'm not trying to talk bad about doctors or nurses or whatever. But there are sometimes, you know, it's hard to explain and hard to get doctors and nurses to understand what you're actually going through because they may not see you go through it in the office or on a day-to-day -day basis or whatever the case may be it's hard I guess to get them to really understand what you're going through and whenever you have your appointments just be open and honest and I would say, honestly, you know, you don't have to give your doctors or whoever a hard time. But make sure before you leave out of that office, you have gotten your point across and have told your, told your doctor or whoever everything that you need to tell them. Because if not, they will dismiss it, you know. And like I said, I'm not trying to bash doctors or nurse practitioners or whoever the case may be. I'm just speaking from experience and I'm speaking, you know, for anyone else who may have gotten dismissed, you know, because they knew in their, they knew that something was going on with them and they just didn't get the right information when they went to, you know, get checked out. So, um, always be open and honest about what you're dealing with and how you feel so um i ended up with my pain management i ended up going like every i think i was seeing pain management like every two or three months um and 
and of course when the pandemic hit we ended up going to you know doing like video calls so again each time I would have my appointment I would tell my you know pain management doctor or whatever this is what I'm still experiencing like I'm still having pain and you know X Y and Z I'm taking my medicine so we ended up I think this particular doctor she instead of me taking the medicine three times a day she ended up having me take it four times a day and I was still on the 100 milligram um, then I believe they took it up later on we went to like three 300 or something but now I am on 600 milligrams of um, gabapentin and I'm taking it three times a day so I'm going to be very open and very honest um, do I feel like the gabapentin is helping I would say yes and no you know um, and I say that because I don't know if my body is like getting used to the medicine or what you know um, So that's why I say yes and no. Some days I feel like it works. Some days I feel like it doesn't. So um, I'm still trying to figure that piece out. Because you know we're all different. Our bodies work differently. So yeah. Um, but I still like I said I still take the medicine. Because you know that's what I'm on right now until we decide we're going to try something different so recently I learned that I may have two other diagnoses um, so I'm going to bag up to maybe about November December of last year um Again, that's when I I found myself just calling out of work a lot more. And because I was just I was having more pain in my body than normal, you know. And I just felt like nothing I was doing was helping much, you know. Um, mind you, by that time I had purchased like several different things. Um, I had purchased leg compression. Um, a lead comp compression machine which had heat with it as well like it came with a heat setting um, I had also purchased a sauna that I will I'll link, leave the links down below to everything um, I was still doing my baths and I had already like months ago months before this I had already started using like Epsom salt and whatnot in my baths um, I was practicing meditation and you know just practicing more of self care because I'm like okay if I don't slow down if I don't you know do this if I don't you know just take time for me I know I'm going to end up in a flare so I had started doing everything that I thought I could do to help manage my pain I was even seeing a therapist um, before the pandemic hit as well and that got thrown off when the pandemic hit um, and I actually I have been thinking about going back to see a therapist um, just so you know I can kind of work through some things that I've been dealing with and
when I started um, experiencing more pain, you know, I called my doctor again. I saw my doctor in February, actually. Yeah. No, actually, take that back. I saw my doctor in January. Um, this past January, I went in. And honestly, I, I told my doctor, you know, I just, I need to find another pain management because I just felt like the one that I have, you know, now, um, I honestly just felt like we weren't getting anywhere, you know, um, but again, I'm not, you know, not trying to bash or anything like that. I just felt like she was not a good fit for me. Um, so my primary care doctor ended up, she actually wrote my prescription for my for the new prescription of the gabapentin that I'm taking. She actually wrote that prescription for me. Um, I felt like the, prim not the primary, but the pain management doctor, I felt like she wasn't budging. She wasn't, you know, willing to have me try a different dosage or even try a different medicine and that's where I'm kind of at right now um, I'm actually in the midst of seeing if I can get another primary doctor um, not primary um, pain management that specializes in people you know with work with people who have chronic pain issues you know um, and one who really understands and works with people who have you know fibromyalgia or whatever the case may be so that's where I am right now um, so my primary care doctor like I said she wrote me a new prescription to increase my um, gabapentin to what it is now and she actually ended up ordering some more labs on me so we did labs she put in a referral for me to see a rheumatologist and I started seeing a rheumatologist in like I think it was in June May or June I started seeing the rheumatologist and the rheumatologist put in more labs um, for me as well um, I forget the name of the test she ordered but she wanted to I guess it was a test to order you know to see if I had um, any like connective tissue or autoimmune you know stuff going on so uh, which my primary care doctor the labs that she ordered um, she ended up writing me back when the labs came back and she said that you know some of your markers are showing that you know you may have this issue going on and like I said I just started I felt different I felt like I had more pain like a few months before that and I just did not want to ignore it I really did not because like I said I was doing everything I could to try to keep my pain under control and to manage it but I just still felt like something else was going on so um after going to my rheumatologist and you know, we got the labs back from that. Uh, my lab work came back showing that I may have um, a lupus Sjogren's overlap on top of the fibromyalgia. So, 
today at this moment, that's where I am. Um, I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and a lupus Sjogren's overlap. So, one of the new things that I have been experiencing is just a lot more joint pain and a lot more stiffness there was at one point where I just felt like my throat was dry constantly um, my eyes do get dry sometimes but I didn't really notice it a whole lot you know um, in the beginning I just knew the main issues that I was having was the joint pain the stiffness I have a lot of pain like it feels like the muscle the fibers the muscle fibers or whatever um, that connects to my bones or whatever to my joints um, I feel like I have a lot of pain there too you know so um again fatigue um there have been days where and I don't know if this is a actual if this has anything to do with the actual diagnosis that I have but lately I have been experiencing lightheadedness um still have my days where I might be nauseated um, lightheadedness, dizziness, and I've been having, you know, ringing and whatnot in my ears, um, and just hearing all kinds of sounds, and it's just been bad for the last two months, I think. It, well, I'm not going to say bad, but it's just, the ringing in my ears has just been more consistent, you know, in which I've, growing up, I've had you know some you know experiences with uh ringing in my ears but i mean it would last for a few seconds and maybe it'll happen like one day and then i won't hear it anymore for a while like months weeks will go by and i won't have it but here lately it's been about two months and i yeah, I'm still getting this ringing or it sounds like I have a shell over my ear, like a seashell. It feels like I can, sounds like I can almost hear the ocean, hear things flowing in my head. Or it can be um, almost like I can hear a heartbeat or like a bug or something flapping his wings in my ear. And so this past, last Monday... Yeah, last Monday I went to the doctor, to the ENT doctor, to get that checked out. Um, and I actually go back tomorrow. They're going to be doing some further testing to make sure there's nothing else going on in my inner ear. Um, so I'm going to get my husband to take me to that because... I don't know how I'm going to feel after these tests that they're going to do. Hopefully it won't be nothing too bad. But one of the tests I looked up, it looked like they put you in a chair or something. And they may have you like moving around or whatever to kind of see if you're going to get dizzy. So I'm only having my husband take me just in case they do something that may cause me to be dizzy. And, you know, I don't want to risk driving home but even though it's, we don't stay far. I'm like 10 minutes from um, the facility I'll be going to. But still, I don't want to risk, you know, driving home and being dizzy. So, um, and there has also been like days where I felt like when I'm dizzy and I'm experiencing the what they call it. Some people say tinnitus and I've heard people say tinnitus. However you pronounce it. When I'm experiencing that. The ringing. The sounds in my ears. Um, and it's like it all happens at once. It's like sometimes it affects my vision. Like I can still see. But. I just feel like. 
I don't know something is going on in my eye area you know um, where it may feel like I can't really focus on things for too long or just my vision is just kind of you know being played with at the moment um, I can't I don't know how to really explain it but like I said I can still see it's not like my vision goes out it's just something weird is going on in that area as well so um yeah I go to ENT on tomorrow and um I've actually had a flare yesterday um and today I've just been dealing with a lot of stiffness more so in my hips and my hips down pretty much I've been dealing with a lot of stiffness um and like my lower back area down pretty much um so and I think that has something one one I had that I think that had something to do with me kind of laying down all day yesterday while well, I was up off and on it wasn't like I was just laying down you know I would get up if the kids needed me or get something to eat or go to the bathroom or whatnot. But um, I just wasn't as active yesterday because it was just hard for me to get up and move. And like even yesterday, it was hard for me to walk because the bottom of my feet were hurting so bad. And it just felt like I was walking on rocks all day. And all of my joints like they were just aching and even like the muscle pain I have that as well so um the medicine that I'm taking for the lupus of uh, Sjogren's overlap is hydroxychloroquine or some people may call it plaquenil um I actually went Monday this Monday for my eye appointment uh, my rheumatologist wanted me to get uh, my eyes checked to get my baseline because honestly since the pandemic I honestly have not gone to the eye doctor or any other doctor like I should have other than you know my primary doctor um, so I'm trying to get all of that you know back on track to um, so we started back going, yeah, started Monday, got a new eye doctor now, um, and I also got a new prescription, but they checked my eyes, um, and honestly, I, I can't even tell you how, like, what all they were actually looking for, but, um, I guess after a while being on this particular medicine the plaquenil um, or hydroxychloroquine it messes with your eyes and may cause um, I'm not sure I can't remember if it causes vision loss but it may cause like inflammation or something um, I'll have to go back and read up on it but it does mess with your eyes after a while but the doctor told me um, the eye doctor told me that maybe around like they say usually after about five years or around five years they usually don't see people have issues with their eyes you know until they reach like that five year mark or something like that after being on the medication so they just wanted to get my overline my um overall baseline and just see where my eyes were um so for right now, you know, I know I have a new prescription and during the exam, when the actual doctor came in to examine me because, you know, they had some other people coming in, taking me to all kinds of machines and <laughs> the actual um, test where you have to look through the lens, I had to do that twice. Um, 
you know, so you can, you know, read the lines and whatnot. I had to do that one twice. Um, because I think the second time the guy that came in, it was a different guy. He just wanted to be sure that what they had written down on the paper was correct. Um, but they said my eyes look fine for now. And they did call out, the doctor did call out something about my nerves and my eye might be, you know, they just might be larger. And that might just be, you know, normal for me. I forget the name of the nerve, but um, she said it wasn't nothing that was too concerning or whatever. You know, just follow up with them once a year and yeah, just go from there. So um, I'm not worried about, you know, anything, you know, as long as I continue to follow up with my eye doctor and, you know, my other doctors and whatever and just let them know what's going on. But I do want to get this issue resolved with my ears because it has been driving me crazy. Um, it's one thing to have to deal with one issue, but then when you have another issue on top of that issue and, you know, so on and so on, it can be a lot. It can be very stressful and draining and especially when you have to have a lot of doctor appointments, you know. Um, and one thing for me is I've had two small kids and, you know, my youngest, you know, I've mentioned it before. She's a special needs, you know, and she has to have a lot of care, like around the clock. And that is my motivation every day. Even when I'm hurting, like my kids are my motivation every day. There are a lot of days where I don't want to get up and you know can't get up and whatnot but I get up and do what I need to do for them but you know I and I will say you know I have neglected you know my health at times um but I have to stay on top of that as far as you know taking care of myself because if I don't take care of me, I cannot take care of my kids. I can't take care of, you know, anybody in my household. So, that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to focus on. Is taking care of me. You know. Um, and if that means, you know, saying no or, like I said, calling out of work or, you know, missing some events, you know, if that's what I have to do to take care of me, then that's what I have to do. Um, and a lot of people don't understand it. They'll say, you know, oh, she's looking for sympathy or, you know, well, I'm not speaking with, for me, but, you know, and who knows? I, there have probably been people that say it, you know, she's looking for attention or she's looking for sympathy or whatever. That's not the case, you know, it's just you as a person and I'm speaking to anybody out there you as a person you might have been that person who once like I said I was always on the go I was always doing something I was staying busy working and whatever the case may be but when my health when my body started letting me know you need to slow down you need to take it easy or whatever I had to make some changes and I mean it's just that you know it's it is what it is I can't reverse it I can't you know magically just get rid of it you know it's gonna be with me you know I have to deal with these you know diseases or illnesses or whatever the case may be and if I have to call out of work or if I have to miss an event or, you know, just change my plans because you never know every day that you wake up, you never know how your day is going to be. There have been times where I have literally, I've gotten ready for work and I couldn't even walk out that door because my pain started flaring up 
Like I was thinking, you know, my day is going to be good. I'm going to go to work and come back home and X, Y, and Z. Before I could even get out of the door good, my pain level would flare up. And I'm just like, I just, I can't go. I can't. Or like, if, if it wasn't the pain, it was just, it was the fatigue on top of the pain, you know, that I'm just like, there's no way I can go to this place or I can't do this today because I'm just so tired. Like taking a shower, cooking, even just getting my kids ready for the day. The smallest little thing sometimes can just wipe me out. Like I'm so exhausted. I feel like I haven't slept or gotten any rest in a week. Like it literally wipes me out. Um, I remember early on, there were days where I, I literally I slept for anywhere from ten to sixteen hours. That's how tired I felt, and I would remember waking up, but then I'll fall back to sleep. It's like I could not get up that's how bad the fatigue for me can get like I was literally sleep and just almost feel like I, I can never wake up um and I'm pretty sure you know those of you who deal with fatigue and whatnot you probably can relate you probably can relate so um yeah I have to help me cope with my pain and whatever that I deal with, you know, like I said, I I had started practicing like meditation and whatnot. And I still like at night when I go to sleep, in order for me to get a good night's sleep, like I'll have to place something. Um, I have a sound machine. I also play... Um, like I'll find like a meditation channel or something like that on YouTube. I'll play that. Usually those nights when I play, you know, something in the background. I think those are my best nights that I sleep. But if I don't play them, I don't get good rest at all. And outside of doing the meditation or whatever the case may be um like i said i have the sauna i have the compression machine that helps the sauna for me it helps me um just like the shower or bath does like it helps me in that moment um and sometimes you know it'll just it'll help me completely like it'll take the pain or the edge off of the pain um, or whatever but um, I also ordered recently um, I have these um, I have a metal one and I also ordered like a wood um, kit and I forget what the name of it is but um, it's the tools that you use for scraping. People use it for scraping, you know, muscles or whatever. Um, so I have a couple of those. I don't use them often um, because, you know, my skin body might be, you know, a little sensitive. But I do use it like for my problem areas are the bottom of my feet and this um, shoulder. Or a scapular area, I would say. Those are my big problem areas um, that I actually more so use those tools on. Um, so it's just the you know the scraping tools, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, it's the kit that I got. I ordered it off Amazon. It comes with a. Um, 
like a hammer, like a wooden hammer type. It's not like an actual, you know, metal hammer. It's the wooden um, handle. Like one end is flat and then the other end is has a slight point to it. So I like to use that on this problem area over my scapula that bothers me. Um, I was at one point getting massages and I stopped doing that like a few months ago and I'm I probably need to start back but I was getting massages and um, not only when I started getting massages it was more so a way for me to kind of get away from my everyday life and just kind of relax and have my me time um, do I find that it helps me with my fibromyalgia pain I would say yes, but it just depends. It depends. Again, like I said, with me, from what I found, you just never know how your pain level is going to be on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why I try to de-stress as much as I can, not worry about a lot of stuff. Because, like I said, when I first started having a lot of issues with pain, I like thinking back I think a lot of stress was my main issue because actually I was in the hospital with my daughter um, and I forget exactly what hospital status was early on um, because she's you know was having seizures so we were back and forth in the hospital and dealing with her other diagnosis as well but I was actually in the hospital with my daughter and I was having a flare. And I just remember I was just feeling, you know, just really stressed. And I was on edge about a lot of stuff. And after, you know, things kind of calmed down, I was like, stress has to be my trigger, you know. And it doesn't matter what kind of stress. It just, it can be emotional stress. It can be just physical stress if I just do too much, you know. Um, I tried to help one of my cousins decorate for one of her children's birthday parties and I managed to get the decorations up but I'm going to tell you that night I paid for it I paid for it so um, that's why even like with work I work part time because I cannot do full time and I have found this even when I was working full time and I was having these issues. It just takes so much out of me to even just get through the shift. So I have found cutting my hours back and only sticking to the schedule that I have now. It works for me. It works for me. Um... There have been times I've tried to do a little more, but again, I have to scale it back. So, it's like you almost have to kind of pick and choose sometimes. And you kind of have to just go with the flow and see how your day is going to go or whatever. Before you can just actually say, oh, I'm going to do this and, you know, I'm going to plan this and whatever the case may be. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about, or a lot about what I have been going through and what I have been dealing with. Um, so to anyone who, like I said, if you're having any kind of pain, I don't care what it is, go get checked out, go get checked out. It can be the smallest pain and it can very well be nothing but it does not hurt to get checked out and don't be ashamed to say you know I want to have another doctor to be on my case or whatever to look through my labs don't be ashamed because like I said doctors are humans they can make mistakes too you know, they might very well have studied and, you know, went to school for, you know, their profession or whatever. 
but sometimes I feel like as the the person that's actually dealing with the issue you know how you actually feel you know what you can and what you can't do um you know your limits you know so that's why I say it's important to advocate for yourself because like I said even when you go for your appointments or whatever you may be having a good day and they may not see you limping they may not see you um walking slow or they may not see that you're in pain you know they may not see the tears that you might cry because trust I've had those days I've had those nights where I've literally been in tears because my pain was so bad I've had days where I've almost gone to the emergency room in which those days I probably should have been in the emergency room um to get you know just checked out all together but just that whole mindset of being in the ER for hours or whatever kept me from not going but honestly um I, I just I've learned from that like if I'm ever in that much pain again I'm going somewhere and I know some people say you know well don't go to the ER if you have fibromyalgia or whatever the case may be because they're just going to treat you like you are you know um seeking drugs or they're going to treat you like you know it's all in your head or whatever the case may be don't ever feel like that and nobody should ever feel like you know they can't go to the ER or whatever the case may be or you know just to any doctor nobody should feel like they can't go because you know some doctor is not going to believe them or you know they're going to say oh it's all in your head or nothing's wrong nothing's wrong don't ever feel like that keep advocating for yourself until you find someone that will understand and listen and hear you out and do the necessary things that they need to do to help you um so um i do have a few follow-up coming up I think with my rheumatologist I will see her every three months um, and as far as pain management goes I'm probably going to be seeking you know another pain management doctor I had some insurance changes too recently so I have to find um, a new doctor that is going to take the insurance I have now um, so that's gonna take me a little while um and then yeah but i do plan on coming back to keep you all up to date on how i feel um and how things are going for me um i honestly i try to stay positive i try to you know uplift myself and um not be down because there like I said there are some tough days for me and I try not to let it get me down at all you know I just I just kind of tell myself you know it's only a test it's only a test it's only a test um so And I know some people will say, you know, what does she mean by, it's, you know, it's only a test. And I, I say that because I know that God is not going to put more on me than I can bear. And I know that at the end of the day, my Heavenly Father is going to, one day, He's going to take this pain away from me. And I'm not going to have to deal with it. Nobody is going to have to deal with pain. And you know all kinds of sicknesses. So. Um, you all have. A wonderful day. Be blessed. Be safe. And. 
remember to continue to advocate for yourself if nobody else does. And I will see you all soon.